Okay, so in this section, we're going to look at a little bit of the mathematics about how to fit logistic regression models. So to set that problem up, let's say we have some data, and let's just for the time being, look at the binary classification problem. So we have n data samples, each has a feature vector xi and a binary label. So for example, in the breast cancer case, we would that feature vector would have two features, the size and the margin, and each sample would have some label. In this case, I've drawn it with a red or a green dot. Now, what we were talking about in the previous section was that we wanted to fit a logistic model. And a logistic model just means that if I have a new sample X, I'm going to predict its probability of being in a class by doing two things. I take a linear combination of the features, and it gives a scalar Z, and then from that Z, I compute its probability. Now, when you look at that um, model, it has some unknown parameters, which are the vector of coefficients W. So you could graphically represent that W as shown here. Now, when you see this, you can see that there are a lot of different possible W's that seem reasonable for partitioning these green circles from the red ones. And the question is, how do we select the correct W? So the key concept is what we call the maximum likelihood principle. So you would have seen this definitely if you took the probability class and certainly in the detection and estimation class. But even if you have never heard of it, it's a pretty simple concept, at least in concept, in theory. I'm going to walk you through it. So the idea of the maximum likelihood principle, and it applies very generally, is starts off with something called the likelihood function. And it's just this mathematical conditional probability. So you see it has three um, variables in it. It has our data x, our output y, and our parameters w. And all this mathematical expression says is that if I gave you the inputs x and the parameters w, what is the conditional probability that I would have seen y? All right, and this is over all the data. Now, why would I be interested in such a function? I'll show you how to compute it in a moment. The key idea is that this quantity, this conditional probability, the likelihood, should be higher whenever the data is a better match with the parameters. Because it says that, well, given this input and given this w, the, some candidate parameters, this is high, it means that that w, that y that I did see, was very likely to have occurred from this model. On the other hand, if it's low, it means that it's not really consistent with that parameter. Now, you probably already got the main idea. The key idea in maximum likelihood is that I just pick the W, the parameters, to maximize that conditional probability or maximize the likelihood. And that makes very good intuitive sense. If you take the detection and estimation class, you'll also learn it has very good statistical properties. But we don't need that if you can just trust the idea that this is a generally good principle to develop any estimator. With that in mind, I'm going to show you how to compute the likelihood for the binary classification problem. So again, imagine we have n samples with binary labels. And the key idea is this result that if you do maximum likelihood estimation for the logistic model, it's equivalent to minimizing this function. And this function here is called the binary cross entropy. I'm going to graphically show you that in a second. Let me just, and I'm going to prove this also below, but let me just show you a few things. The first and most important thing is that this function just gives you a simple procedure to write the maximum likelihood estimation problem as a minimizing some function. If you recall, when we were looking at a linear regression, we were just minimizing that squared error 
Here we're just minimizing a different function which happens to have these log terms. Now, one thing about that function. You see here that the function on the right hand side depends on these zi's, but the zi's depend on the w's through this second equation. So the zi's are kind of implicitly depending on the w's. Now, let me um, try to, before proving that this is indeed the same as doing the maximum likelihood, let me show you some graphical properties about this function. So here's our binary cross entropy function. And you can see it's a sum of terms. And each term is like this. So this uh, function is a function of two things, the zi and the yi. The yi can be either 0 and 1. So let's take a look at the curve when yi is 0. And that's shown as, as a function of z, is shown here as blue. So what this means is that if the sample is 0, it will have a higher cost as z is larger. Now that means when you're trying to minimize the function, it will try to make z less than 0. In fact, it will try to make it as negative as possible. On the other hand, if the sample is positive, that's yi is 1, the function looks like this orange curve. If you try to minimize that, it will try to make z as high as possible. So it's going to try to make z large on the negative samples, sorry, the positive samples, and z to be large, large negative value on the negative um, samples. Now, if you go back and you think of what happened in the case of a hard decision classifier, the classifier would always select y hat to be 1 when z is positive and y hat to be 1 when z is negative. So this is trying to make it not have any errors, but it allows you to make mistakes. In other words, even for the negative samples, you're allowed to make z positive, or for the positive samples, you're allowed to make z negative, but you just do it at a cost. Because it's, this is the idea that the logistic model doesn't expect that the classifier is ever going to exactly produce zero training error on any data set. Now, now I want to turn to just proving this binary cross entropy formula. So we just need to do a little bit of math. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's more just about notation. So the first thing we need to look at is something called the min and the argument. So if you just go back to calculus and I draw a function of x, any function like this quadratic, right? we all know its min is the smallest value on the y-axis. So that would happen in this parabola, the smallest value would be 2. So if a mathematician writes min over x of f of x, they're talking about the value on the y-axis. So this is probably what you saw in calculus. What you might not have seen in calculus, which is an equally easy idea, is the term argmin. And argmin just means the value on the x-axis that produces the minimum value. So in this case, the value, the function achieves its minimum when x is 1. So we say argmin of x of f of x equals 1. Just, just a mathematical notation for a concept that you already understand. So now if you see argmin, don't be scared. That's all it means. Now, the use of this for us is that we can say that maximum likelihood is just we um, want to find the w that maximizes this likelihood or this conditional probability or using my mathematical notation i want to say i want to find w hat is the arg max over w of p of y given x and w so that's all it means. So it looks really intimidating, but it's just this. This thing is not that hard. It's just the conditional probability of seeing the labels given the parameters in the input, and then I'm going to maximize that. So it's just notation to express an idea which you probably understand already. It's just putting it into mathematical notation. Okay, now we're going to go about proving 
this binary cross entropy formula. It's a couple of steps, but they're not, none of them are that hard. The first is that you make an assumption that in this model, the output on each sample are independent and they depend only on Xi. Now, if you remember back from probability, if you have a bunch of independent random variables, they factor. So if I have the vector of all the samples, that conditional probability, the probability, that joint probability will just be a product of the probabilities on each sample. Okay, so we now we only have to look at one sample at a time. Now, the next thing to do is to introduce something called the log likelihood. Instead of trying to maximize this, we're going to look at the negative log of this. So we're going to call that L of W, and this is just the negative log of this probability. And the reason why we want to look at the negative log is because if you remember, log of a product is the sum of the logs. So it converts products to sums, and that's all I've done in this next step. Now, the key idea then is that if you want to maximize this probability, it's same as minimizing the negative log. Why is that? Because here on the right, I've drawn this log likelihood function. So it takes this uh, probability p and converts it to negative log of p. And you can see here that it de monotonically decreases. So that means that if I want to make this p as large as possible, it's the same as making the negative log of p as small as possible. All right, so all I've done here is just done this. So we just need to minimize this negative log likelihood. And now, with that bit of preamble, we can prove our result, that we want to uh, minimize this binary cross entropy. It's just this. Okay, so our negative log likelihood will just be this. But remember that in the binary cross, in the binary logistic model, the probability of the sample is 1, is this 1 over 1 plus e to the minus zi. All right? And therefore, um, the probability that it's 0 is 1 minus this. And so you can write it like this just be a little bit of mathematical rearrangement, not too hard. And therefore, you could write this little trick, right? You say that the log of this, well, when yi is 1, it's this value, all right? It's, it's when y is 1, it's, it's the log of this, and when yi is 0, it's the log of this. And when you substitute these expressions in here and do a little bit of math, which I'm not going to waste your time, you get this expression here, all right? And then, if I want to take the negative log likelihood of this, I just take the negative, the sum of the negative values of this, and that is this function here, which is, lo and behold, the binary cross entropy. So I've just done a little bit of math and algebra to get you that function that we saw earlier. Now, all of this extends to the multi-class. I won't walk through all the details, but it's pretty similar. The only weird thing is that you have to, um, to write the function, you need to find this kind of one-hot coded vector. And you, so you say rik is 1 when the label is the kth class and 0 otherwise. So for every i, rik is 1 for exactly one class. And then we're going to just say that the log of that probability is going to be the sum over these k's of this same trick that we pulled. And then after this, and a little bit of math, not too much, I think it might be on your homework, um, you get this function here. And it's pretty similar in form in that there's a log of a sum of exponentials and then minus some other sum here. And this is sometimes called the categorical cross entropy, right? So for binary classification, we have the binary cross entropy. And for multi-class classification, we have categorical cross entropy.
and I don't want to waste the time going through this derivation just so you understand these two functions. Now, now I have a function that I want to minimize. So how do we minimize it? Well, the trick we learned before in when we were looking at logistic regression, sorry, when we were looking at linear regression, is we had our function and we took the derivatives and set it equal to zero. So I've given some math here, all right, which I don't want to bother going into. You could do that here. You could take the derivatives, you could set them equal to zero, and you get some expression. But the problem is this expression gives you it gives you um, p equations and p unknowns, which is great, but they're non-linear equations. So there's no analytic way to solve them. If you recall what happened in linear regression, you we could actually just, in closed form, write what the solution to those equations were. But we can't do that in this case. So how do we go about it at this point? All right, we have to step back and think in general about how we try to minimize functions. So if I have any function of some variables like x, and if they're m x, if x is a vector with m coefficients, I would take its derivative or its gradient and set it equal to zero, and I get m equations and m unknowns. But sometimes you can't solve that, like we've seen. Instead, what you have to do in these cases is do what's called a numerical method, and a numerical method is a computer algorithm that starts at some guess for x and tries to get a sequence of points x that eventually converge to a good minima. And um, then you run this program on your computer. Turns out we're going to cover this, how to do this in detail, or not, I wouldn't say in detail, but touch on it in the next unit. But for today's lecture, I'm just going to use a built-in Python routine. So just going to run it on the computer and it will solve this for us. And in next unit, um, we'll kind of open up the hood and see how that works. But for now, just understand that there is a um, function we're trying to minimize. And there's a computer algorithm that finds that minimum for us using some numerical method. All right. With that in mind, um, before we go on, before you go on, go to the in-class notebook and I put a very simple exercise where I've given you just some very simple 1D data and I want you to plot that binary cross entropy loss function as a function of the parameters of this in this simple 1D model, just to give you a little bit of visual sense of that um, loss function. And once you do that, you can proceed on to our next section.